Hey, this is... R <laughs> wow, wait, no, no, just, just stop it, we'll start it. Games at Beer, and I'm with Pamela from Etched at Designs. And she has her own mic, so that was really. Yeah, that was awesome. kind of. I yeah. love that. Wait, you've got your mic? I'm going to stick another one in your face while you're talking. Maybe he thought I was going to talk real quiet. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, something tells me that's not going to be the case. I was really I worried about that. I've never been one. accused of being quiet. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a soft talker. So. Sorry. Wow, really? And a hard drinker. Really? And a little bit of a hard drinker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, it's not hard for me. We, um, you, we are at Game Hole, and you guys are in the, on the vendor floor. We are. Tell us a little bit about your company, because you guys have got some amazing items. Um, I'm actually just a volunteer with the company. My friend Janice Sage runs a company called Etched It Designs, and she does uh, laser etching on wood, glass, all kinds of different stuff. She does a lot of geek and gamer stuff. She does some wedding kind of stuff too, but she's really more into the geek and gamer type stuff. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me grab that. Yeah, the, the gaming stuff was amazing. So, um, thank you. The item that kind of caught my eye yesterday was okay. So we all have had those days when we're playing a game, a bag full of dice, but there's that one dice that no matter what you do, zero. Because Larry loaded it. Okay, well, Larry may be cheating, and Larry may have sw swapped out your dice on you. It may not be the only thing on the show that's loaded. But, that's true. Okay, that too. Uh, but again, but zero, zero, one, zero, one, <laughs> twenty-sided dice, and it's rolling freaking zeros and ones. Right. So you've come up. Oh, as I've shaken the bits out of it, you've that's come okay. up with the cool dice. Oh, yeah. here. Well, Did you, wow. Just, Hand me this stuff first, so while okay. you talk about this one, because okay. this is the item that caught, kind of caught my eye yeah. first. This is the uh, Despicable Dice Dungeon. And um, what you do with this is you put your dice in solitary confinement. <laughs> so, you know, when they misbehave, I'm going to hand you this if you don't mind. I got it. Thank you. I can hold stuff. What you can hold stuff. You, uh, you take a misbehaving die, and in the dice dungeon it goes. And if you want to torture it a little or whatever, you can just pop the cover on there, shake that bad boy up, punish that sucker. The recidivism rate after they've spent some time in the dice dungeon is very low. Cool. And i got to tell you, Gitmo has got nothing on this particular dice dungeon, <laughs> right, okay? Right, This makes Gitmo look like a picnic. Right, right, <laughs> They're exactly. They're on the exactly. side because they, they can yeah. bang on the bars a yeah, little Yeah, they bit. can even bang on the bars. Well, we put <laughs> the bars in there so that they could look out and see the other dice playing. And having fun. And, yeah, yeah it's kind of like when you ground your kid and you make them sit by the window and watch all the other kids at the playground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. that's what we've done here. There's a little thought into that. A little, yeah. and the kind of thought into it is like, oh, I'm so Make twisted. no mistake, this this is a for-profit prison. This is not a state facility. <laughs> There's no TV in here. <laughs> There's underpaid you know. em employees. Yeah, 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 monitoring yeah, them. Yeah. 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 This is this is not quite as bad as a Turkish prison, but we tried to get close. Ooh, uh, what was it, a midnight run? I'm trying to think of the, uh, that weird movie. Yeah. But I'm making bad movie references from the bad 80s. Movie references. Yeah, from the 80s, from the 80s. From okay, the 80s. but along that same product line, you have something else, which is a, we have, we if you the, really have a bad dice bag one day. Yeah, yeah, this will hold a full set of dice. It's the pathetic polyhedral prison. <laughs> so if you have a whole bunch of bad dice. I didn't realize the name. <laughs> yeah, no, did you not yeah. see the name? That nice. name yeah, is the awesome. Yeah, pathetic polyhedral Got prison. Me. Um, we're also going to be working on a Super Max, hopefully, that will be released at, Game, at uh, GaryCon in March, hopefully. Okay, so, so bes yeah. besides, oh, just hold the mic, I can talk loud enough that people are going to hear me. No, no, no. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll share mine with you. Oh, hey, thank you. Okay, so besides these really cool dice dungeons, you said you guys really kind of lean towards the geek items. Yeah, So, yeah, yeah. before we go into it, so, uh, etched... Etched it. It designs. Etched it designs. Etched it designs. Etched it designs. Again, so what they're doing is... They're taking all your geek fantasies and using a, uh, a laser etching and cutting system to make them into reality. Um, yes, absolutely. Again, some really beautiful etching Thank work you. with Thank these. You. So I do a little, uh, um, as you guys who've watched the show know, I do a little uh, freelance stuff just basically for fun. I've got my own laser etching. This guy kind of bought a very large industrial one. That's a whole other issue we'll get into <laughs> on some other show. But um, 
the, the, they're using an epilogue, and the epilogue is a really, really nice laser cutter. So the uh, the quality of this stuff is beautiful. Um, Thank you. I mean, just uh, crisp, clean, nice cuts on it. I mean, the detail work on, on the dungeons is beautiful. Um, but the whole thing is that nice thing about these laser cutters is they do a lot more. And you bought a few more items that you guys do as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me I put brought these down you guys here. presents. Oh. The, these are etched beer mugs. So we, we figured you needed beer mugs. So this one has the D20 with the one showing. It says minus four wisdom. <laughs> what? This one, this one has the D20 showing the 20, and it says plus three charisma. I'll let you, you guys you arm wrestle over those. Yeah, we, uh, we, yeah. we are, we are going to have to fight over these later, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. We will, we will definitely have to do a little... Uh, uh, actually, you know, I'm thinking a classic mug contest there to see go. who gets which one. There you go. There you go. So, not now. We won't do that now because I'm thinking me and you can probably do this for a while. Yeah. That, so, that could be but we will, we'll have to do where we hold out the full pints and yep. whoever goes down first gets to pick the mug. There so you go. Good to all right? And, you know, so, you can order all of this stuff, even the Despicable Dice Dungeon. You can order this with your name on it. You can order it personalized. Oh, so you'll personalize we all could, of this? Yeah, we could personalize that for oh, you, you know? Nice. Okay, yeah. so that's really yeah, yeah. cool. So, so if I lose, I can edge Tom as a big jerk. You could, you could do that. <laughs> wait a minute, yeah, wait that. a minute. I wouldn't, because I think he's delightful. Oh, wow, wow. I generally think he's delightful, too, except if I lose any contest to him. In which case, then I'm a big jerk. He goes jerk. in the dice dungeon. <laughs> yeah, if you can fit him in that dice, dice dungeon, dungeon take pictures. It's, I want to see it. Oh, uh, Rob's got a dungeon, but it ain't a dice dungeon. <laughs> Just going to put it dungeon, out there. But still. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah. That, you know, <laughs> And this is going down really fast. Yeah, yeah it generally <laughs> yeah. does. Yeah, it, it usually does. It usually, I like okay. it when that happens. So besides mugs, and besides these really cool dice containers, what kind of products are you making? Oh, my goodness. We, um, we etch uh, dice boxes. We do a lot of dice boxes. We do a lot of other things for alcoholics, like flask sets and whiskey stones. Oh, the flask sets. The you flasks got some really beautiful. nice stainless flask, yeah. flask sets I saw yeah. yesterday. And some of them come in just a plain cardboard box. Some of them come in a beautiful rosewood box that you can have etched with whatever you want and um so we do a lot of other stuff like that we do um we can uh use a vinyl plotter and we make vinyl um decals like you see on the outside of a car window and stuff like that you can also have those personalized whatever your particular geek thing is um probably one of our top items besides the dice dungeon is the handcrafted uh unique personalized dice boxes they close with a magnet, so none of your dice will fall out. They hold just over a hundred standard size dice, mm, and you wow. can have whatever you want etched on the outside. We don't judge. I mean, literally, whatever you want on the outside. Hey, a hundred dice on the inside. I got excited with just that. The on the outside is kind of just a bonus at that point. Right. If I can get a hundred of my dice in a box, yeah, yeah I am yeah. good to go. That's great, and they won't fall out. That's great. Yeah, wow. Okay. Great. Um, so. If people again, so you're, you do a lot of the cons? Uh, we do two cons a year. We do Game Hall in November here <laughs> and Gary Con in March in Lake Geneva. Yes. And then we have an Etsy store. Oh. So we're at Etched It Designs on Etsy. Okay. We will have links below on this video. So just watch below. L linked, I'm sorry, Etched by. Etched It Designs. Etched It Designs. Let me take that away. Thank from you. Me. Take Etched that away now. Etched It Designs on Etsy. We'll have a link to your uh, Etsy store thank on you, our thank website you. as well. Do you want this? Yep. Yeah, you might as well give it to there him because yeah. here, I'll take the other one though. Hey, no problem. Mine was fuller. Wait. That, that no. didn't work. No, it wasn't. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I lost out on that deal. Mistake. I lost out on that deal. So, um, how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, since 2014. Okay, so 2014, for a while now. Yeah, 2013, right. 14. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So it sounds like they pretty much have everything for your geek needs. Oh, I yeah. mean, if you need anything custom geek-wise, it sounds like this is going to be the place Absolutely. to go. Um, are you planning on doing more cons? I mean, that's only a couple a year. That's not many. Um, right now, we're just doing the two a year All because right. it takes... It, we handcraft a lot of this stuff. It's built by hand. Yeah. So it takes a long time. And uh, so we would rather make it right and do fewer cons than do a mass production and have somebody go, I'm not paying for that. So, yeah. No, that makes perfect less, sense. Less is better in this case. Well, again, because less it's really better. artwork, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That, that's for and sure. And we do have a lot of custom stuff that comes through that gets built throughout the year and yeah. Christmas is coming so if you need a Ooh. Christmas order you better get it in fast yeah yeah it's coming in fast we're, we're already uh, in beginning of November here so you've only yeah. got 
you know, a couple yeah, months at mo- couple, oh, not even a couple, couple months. of weeks will probably shut off, cut off the Christmas orders, orders? for Christmas because right. it, yeah, the yeah, especially doing a con in November, the orders rolling fast. All right, so if you are at Game Hole Con, make sure to stop by their booth in the vendor area and check them out. Um, if you're going to place an order for Christmas, place it here and get it now. They've got a lot of cool stuff though that you can just pick up and go with. Absolutely. I mean, you guys bought a lot of good products out. Thank Holy you. cow, Thank you bought you. a lot of good products out. Yeah, we, we were just kind of wandering cool around yesterday. Very nice, very nice. No, I'm good. Ta- I talk mean, I can outro. Rob. Do you want me? Why don't you do the outro, Rob? Why don't you I do the outro? Do my job, maybe. Maybe. I could do my job. You could do, a I job. Could do my or job. Or you could just sit here and drink. That's that's we could okay. Do that we too. might just sit here and drink. Another 15 minutes of us just drinking beer. I think would be really <laughs> nice for this interview. <laughs> well, you have the mug for it now. That's true. We could just fill the mugs and just start and just drinking. Drink, start drinking the mugs. I like this exactly. idea. There you go. This, this is pretty good. I like it too. <laughs> okay, let's All right. do that. All right. Check it out, Rob. Thank you very much for coming on Thank the show. You. Don't forget, folks, that the links are down below. We've got much more coming from Game Hole Con as well. More interviews, more walkarounds, and other crazy crap that we do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for watching. Bye. Bye. Two and one and fire. So this, we're, oh my God. <laughs> yes. OMG. Drunken difficulties, please stand by. Guys, Games, and Beer will be back in a moment. Hello, this is Larry with Guys, Games, and Beer, and we're doing another terrific game hall interview. And and we have a pleasure of an artist, an artist among artists, and that artist is... Uh, I'm Dan Hauser. <laughs> hey, Dan, and what... what, what what games have you worked on? Uh, right now, I'm the line artist for Icon Superhero Role Playing Game. Um, it's by Ad Infinitum, uh, and Green Ronin published our core rulebook. Um, I'm also working on Orc right now. Uh, that's going to be coming out by Green Ronin uh, sometime in the near future. Uh, if you check the Green Ronin Roundtable, folks, you'll it's out there. Uh, trust me, the information's out there. Look up Dan Hauser and Orc with an exclamation point. You'll you'll, you'll find out all about it. Well, uh, what are some of the maybe past projects that uh, people might already know? Well, beyond icons, I've also worked on a couple uh, Mutants and Masterminds things. I've written uh, supplements for Dread, and I, I write a lot of modules for uh, icons. Um, and uh, just basically starting out, you know. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to more writing and more, and more artwork. Oh wait! So you also you also do uh, writing like campaign oh, yeah. writing? Or? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, one of the books, Rise of the Phalanx, is a set of modules that I wrote, and I did all the artwork for. Um, we had layout done by Steve Kenson and a lot of the, a lot of the uh, development work he did on that book. But yeah, <laughs> I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> so uh, really, so okay, so I'm a guy. I can put a little pen to paper, and I'm like, dude, I totally want to do this. Uh, so, how does that happen to like actually like wanting it to being paid to do it? Um, well, for me, it was uh, being on message boards for the the role playing game uh, Mutants Masterminds. I started just doing free artwork for people. I was drawing, and somebody was like, "Hey, can you draw me my character?" I'm like, "Sure." And then I was like, "Hey, I'll draw anybody else do anything." Sure. And then uh, I got hooked up with uh, Gareth uh, Skarka. Um, with uh, Adamant Entertainment. Um, he uh, asked me to draw a couple things for him, and I did the first Villainomicon for Mutants Masterminds with him. Um, and then after that, I just kept getting work. <laughs> People were like, hey, you, will you draw this? And I said, yeah, sure. So um, I would say it... I would so say, you kind of demoed it a little bit. Yeah, basically. Well, yes, you have to be willing to... Um, I would say it, it's hard to, to say what anyone should do with their own, like, with their own path, you know what I mean? Um, but for me, I was like, I figured I'll work on spec for something, or I'll work for less than what I norm- what I what I imagine anyone's getting because I don't know. <laughs> so that helps out. That helps out the industry a lot, by the way, artists. <laughs> if you don't know what people are charging, you'll get hired a lot. <laughs> um, but now, basically, luckily, I, I after working with Green Run a few different times, they've been super um, just super helpful about everything. Uh, Hal um, is not Mangold is our art director. Hal, Hal Mangold. Oh, I, yeah. I thought he was an evil computer there. Oh. He is also that, actually. He is also an evil computer, but totally cool so long as you don't want out the airlock or anything. He's he's all right. 
Do you have a table here at Game Hall Con? I sure do. Yep, Mendota Hall, uh, the Exhibitors Hall. If you go around, you'll see Larry Elmore, and then you'll stop, and you won't come to my table. But it's right around the corner <laughs> from there. So if you're thinking Monopoly, we're in the red squares. Yeah. And he's definitely Boardwalk and Park Place. I mean, our rent's okay, but <laughs> I know what you're there for. Swing by my table, though. We do have candy. No, I want to come see your art. <laughs> Absolutely, come yeah. You um, seem overly busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a line. Swing on by and take a look at the stuff I've got. Um, I've got portfolios out, and of course, I've got the icons books. Mm -hmm. um, and do you have actually, for this sale, some fine art pieces for sale that uh, people I can do. I have sell and trade. For sale. Yep, mm -hmm. I have prints for sale, and I'm also doing commissions this weekend. Cool. I was actually in the middle of one when I came over to, inter to interview, so they're going to have me and my head if I don't get it done today. Wow. Um, but yeah, uh, the show. I, when I walked by, I was like, oh, my God, you guys are here. And to be honest, when I saw that you guys were hosting Steel Battalion, I honestly did run in there. I was like, oh, this is awesome. So, yeah, if you're here at GameholeCon and you haven't gone and played Steel <laughs> Battalion one time yet, take take the about 30, time. 40 minutes yeah. to swing by and, and check it out. It's really fun. Really. You guys should bring a camera in there and just film some folks playing it when they really oh, get into have. it. Oh, we have. Believe me. Yes. So you played Steel Battalion. Oh, I'm a huge video game collector, yeah. I have a complete collection of Xbox titles. In fact, I have three copies of uh, Steel Battalion um, because I knew it was a hard game to get. How many, how many line of contacts do you have? And uh, lots, actually, around here. Um, the fellow at my table, come see him. Hey, line, <laughs> of, line of contact, for those that don't know, is about as dead as a video game can be. <laughs> that, uh, yep. You, you, you purchase the video game, and it's impossible to play. Oh, or uh, see. I, have, I have also three Batman Dark Tomorrows. Have you ever tried that game? No. It's total garbage. 100% garbage. And Vivendi or whoever made this garbage, you know that you made garbage. You made hog shit garbage. <laughs> Sorry for the bleep that because it is total hog shit garbage. Bleep that he said. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. This there's there's podcast, shit. yeah, but there's children's larping and paint and take. Yeah, my friends, you know. I don't. All right, you little bastards. Don't repeat what I'm saying. It's beer. Sure. I'm blaming the beer just like Kevin Spacey. Oh. Oh, bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> I have a geeky question. Sure. What is your favorite paper? Or favorite medium to draw with? Oh, you guys are gonna be so mad at me. I have not drawn on paper in seven oh, years. Oh, okay. What, what programs do you use then? I use favorite? Manga Studio mm -hmm. and Frendon. Uh, he's a fellow at Frendon on, on uh, Twitter. He designed most of the brushes that I use. The guy's amazing. He oh. has worked in, he works in physical media and then scans his, his brush strokes in and actually recreates them for the program. Are, are wow. The physical. Are, are the brushes physical? But on a monitor, like a canvas. No. Or, or is it you select? I want to use this brush. Exactly. And but then he designs you have like them a pen from. Yeah. Light, you it's know? it's a yeah. It's a it's a Wacom tablet, and um. But his brushes are designed from actual analog brushes. Like he creates the brushes himself based upon the actual dynamics and how how the brushes move. Dude, that, friend that him seems, again. His his seems, brushes are amazing. That seems. Deceptively simple and horribly complex. What at the you same learn, time. yeah. What you learn immediately <laughs> from using a Wacom tablet and digital media is that it doesn't matter. Like, if you, oh, I did this in pencil, great, but I still had to draw the thing in the computer. The computer's not doing much for you. It's not gonna go the only, the only, the only real help is that it, you can erase and not feel bad. You're like, oh, it's erased. I, I feel like I feel like one of maybe the challenge is like, okay, a pencil line, like an outline, probably pretty straightforward, not really a big deal. Shading. Oh, all of Seems that. Like yeah, that would be like complex. Like, <laughs> okay, you know, like because because okay, so and and maybe I mean sometimes it's done by overlaying. So, all right, so I do a a light brush this way, right, and then I take another light brush, but I start a little further back. Oh, sure, you yeah, know, with the same with the <laughs> yep. same brush. Well, and here's I just the thing. Keep going, yeah, yeah, and that would make a shading effect. Yep. And the thing with these you know. digital brushes is it's all the same techniques. You just have to manually pick which brush you're using. But yeah, it's, uh, okay. I, I've worked primarily digitally since uh, the first Icons book, and I haven't turned back since. I've done. A, I've got a couple things that I'm going to be um, next year Game Holcom probably. I'll have packs of like a, the original sketches that I did mixed with the, the finished digitals, and I'll sell those because they're the only originals I have. But I got a lot of stuff that I used to sketch first on paper, mm -hmm. scan in, and then ink. But now I just do everything straight up in, in Manga Studio. You know, what about medium? Differences, so real world medium differences mm -hmm. uh, digitally. So watercolors versus oil. Well, um, well, if you swing swing by my table, I'll show you some really cool stuff. I'm able to actually recreate watercolors and paper styles and everything in this program because of this friend and because of his brushes. 
Yep. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, um, what 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 was one of your uh, favorite commissions or or projects? Um, so far, my favorite project to work on was probably the most recent book that we did, Origins. Okay. Um, I got to do a lot of inclusive art, like. So uh, Origins was an original book. And Origins is for Icons. It's the most okay. it's the most recent Icons archetype book, okay. and um, we just got to be really inclusive with it. I mean, there's you don't see a lot of superheroes, for example, who are African American and not somehow electrical based. You know what I mean? Like or have the word really? black why, in their why, name. Why? Why, you know what why, I mean? why would African Americans be electrical? I have based? no idea, but I mean, <laughs> or have the word black in their name. Like, oh. like we just wanted to be really you mean, inclusive, like and we went out of our black way to do that. Panther or something. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Like that's that's the kind of Black thing that Spider Man. <laughs> well, he is actually just wearing a suit, but yeah. You okay. know what I mean? Like adding inclusive stuff into this book was really cool and, and getting the direction from Steve Kenson is awesome. Um and he's a dude, anytime I get to work with Steve is fantastic. The guy is amazingly um creative as far as his concepts go. And it's when you can work with somebody who can tell you exactly what they want and you can deliver because you understand the thing that they're trying to get across. He doesn't dictate, like, I want this in this corner, that in that corner, this and this, you know, but he does say, this is the feeling I want, go with it. And, but is I mean, it's so evocative, you're able to just picture what he wants and, and get it done. So you're given a lot of creative license. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and he trusts your absolutely. skills to yep. be able to bring out. Well, out. yeah, we've been, we've been teamed up now for quite a while, and it's been working. Um, we've got projects coming out soon. I, I hope he doesn't get mad, but... I, this is too awesome not to tell you. Like the next, the next icons Exclusive module scoop. is going to be um, Santa Claus versus the Metaskulks. <laughs> so I, I'm going to finish my commission and start working, finishing up Orc and, and starting on the uh, the sketches for that because it's going to be fantastic. That sounds like I a fun wait. project. Actually, I think I'm going to have to get going soon. All I right. hate to leave you guys, All right. but I do have to go. Cause Here, close us out, Larry. You know, you know what? I, actually, I do. I, <laughs> all right. I, you know, I had this, I had this uh, uh, question. That was, oh, sure. No, go ahead. You know, but, uh, but, but I lost it. I got, oh. I, got, I, got, I, got, I got lost in what you were saying, which, you know what? It's my eyes. That, that's good listening. You know, <laughs> He's you know, a like, good uh, listener. not worried about what I'm going to say. Just uh, yeah, exactly. pay attention to what you're saying. I also yak and yak too much. <laughs> yak and yak. Don't come back. <laughs> All right. We will. We will. We will uh, I appreciate we will, that. We will let you get going. Um, yeah. Oh, I actually I remember it now. Do you mind? Okay. No, no. Go ahead. So now, and it's it's kind of a simple question, but it's a it's a matter of process and and art and uh, so. Um, do you tend to listen to music when you do your art, and what music do you listen to? Today, um, I actually am listening to music while I work. I listen to The Misfits and uh, Black Sabbath and anything like metal because it keeps you motivated. Okay, um, all right. Yeah, sometimes I'll like, or just anything with I a good know. beat. Have you heard Bach lately? I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, if I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> doesn't he do a lullaby? Like, doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so. You do it, man. Like Dragon listen. Force? <laughs> yeah, I will listen to some Dragon Force while I'm drawing, no lie. Yeah, okay. Wait, well, you know. I, I mean, mean in Orc right now, like working on Orc, it, that trust me, we want to melt faces with the art in this book and how this book is going to go. It's a beer and pretzels game. You play as orcs, who are just as goofy and doomed as you can imagine them to be. You're the you're not the good guys, and you're not the best bad guys either. Dude, wait, wait <laughs> it is the wait, best game that brings ever. That's an interesting idea. Do you listen to different music based on if yes. you're drawing good guys, sure, or if you're drawing bad guys? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep yourself like I. You know when I'm drawing superhero stuff, I honestly listen to NFL films music. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, it's epic amazing. music, man. I also play it at the table sometimes. When we're playing superhero games. Because it fits. Amazing. If you guys out there go to YouTube, just click on an NFL film song, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, for that's sure. slow motion music. Yeah, right, exactly. It play, is dude, like, play oh. that in your Steel Battalion room, dude. Well, there you go. I know. Seriously, I know. it's militaristic. I, I, it's really earlier, cool music. I was like. Oh, let's get a smoke machine and some metal <laughs> music in here. Let's get some flash pots and a couple flash bang grenades. Get these people really into it. It's got some PTSD or this ain't happening. Yeah. That, your, your mech's actually blowing up. <laughs> What's that smell? Oh, we set your jacket on fire. Critical failure. Sorry. <laughs> Did you eject? Wait, and also, 
I hope they bring a camera in there so you can see the size of the controllers. <laughs> you have to literally be a pilot of some kind to play this game. Yeah, it's, it's you know three feet. Yeah, it's, 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 quite it's the size of a, of a Bigfoot pizza. If you remember Little Caesars old Bigfoot pizza, <laughs> with switches and knobs and lights. I totally do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm sure there are because there's a lot of gamers in there. Oh, I'm man. sure there's food of all oh, kinds. Man. Cheetos. Actually, they don't sell them here, but you're sure to get some, like, pulled pork sauce. Yeah. Some of them, pulled that pork taco sauce. truck's pretty amazing. That, 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 I don't even think yeah. it exists, but I'm for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right. Dan, it's been a, I gotta tell you, it has been awesome to have you on. Absolutely. Thank you for Absolutely. cutting some yeah, time out of your schedule. Yeah, and uh, look for his art. It's super awesome. Thank so, you. So, go, go check it out. Um, yeah, actually, if you go to RPG Now and just plug in Icons Assembled Edition or plug my name in anywhere in RPG Now, you'll just see a, whole, a huge list of all the stuff. Cool. So RPG cool. Now, Dan yep. Hauser, artist extraordinaire. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. much for being on our yeah, show. no problem. And, and super fun podcast. Here. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'll call in sometime on Skype. Two, one. Hello, we're here with... <laughs> I screwed it. I'm sorry. Drunken difficulties, please stand by. Guys, Games, and Beer will be back in a moment. So I'm here with... Chris Henson. And you're with... RPG Crate. All right, so tell us about RPG Crate. What do you do? So RPG Crate is a monthly subscription service for roleplay games. It's like one of the other, any other monthly uh, membership service, and I specialize in uh, role play games. And I put in the crate monthly, uh, there's a t shirt that's guaranteed, and uh, three adventure cards. There's uh, sometimes hardback books, sometimes modules, dice, miniatures, all kinds of stuff like that. All sorts of goodies. Okay. So it varies from month to month, I assume. Yeah. So we have a monthly theme. We announce the theme uh, uh, several weeks before the billing occurs, okay. t typically. And um, the themes are very uh, fantasy roleplay based. Um, our products are, I say, 90% 5th edition. Um, that's what we uh, prefer. That's kind of where our customer base gravitated to. Okay. And um, we ship about uh, the 20th or a little bit after. And we bill just a little bit, you know, about that same time. Okay. So it's a membership-based, no contract. People can try it out a month and cancel or, you know, whatever they decide to do, keep going. We've uh, just entered our second season a few months ago. Okay. Uh, and uh, we've got customers that have started from the beginning. So we have people that have gotten, you know, 14 crates so far. So. Okay. Very cool. Um, so your second season, that's awesome. Have you, uh, how much is your crate? Per month, it's thirty uh, twenty nine eighty nine a month okay. plus plus shipping, um, and that's a that's a really good question. A lot of people ask me why why shipping or why not put free shipping and raise the price. So it was a pretty long discussion. Actually, a decision we made. We wanted people to know exactly how much the crate cost and how much was for shipping, so that they could do a proper value comparison. Yeah. If I had boiled in the cost of the shipping. Depending on how far away you live, we might have actually lost maybe on some of them or whatever the case is. So now you, you get $30 and you can compare that right away. And um, it's people that are a long way from us, we're in the, the Midwest. So people that are like in California or mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, they might pay a little bit more, maybe a dollar or two more for shipping. Okay. But um, that's the, and we don't offer currently, we don't offer like year memberships. We're just month to month for now. Okay. And so a lot of uh, subscriptions offer you to uh, skip months. Do you have that kind of Yeah, sure. Deal? Yeah. Uh, Crate Joy is the company that we use on the back end. And uh, they're real super easy. The checkout screen has an account management piece. Okay. So you can log on and you can change your address. You can change your uh, t-shirt size preference. You can skip a month. Um, you can cancel and then renew later, whatever the case is. We keep records of um, whenever someone joined and they do two or three months and they want to wait a while, come back. Mm -hmm. You know, your account still shows that, you know, you remember and yep, it's pretty easy to work through. Website's pretty simple. Cool. Can you take us through your last uh, maybe two months of what was in your boxes? 
Yeah, so um, the month before last, it was uh, the theme was Tarragon Expedition. Okay. And Tarragon is a, a really old term for dragon mm -hmm. as well. And it's also a green leafy... Oh, I'm uh, a leafy, dragon, so I know. Nice, got it. So the tarragon is also a green leafy uh, ingredient for cooking. Okay. So we had a play on that. Uh, the adventure involved us uh, uh, cooking, and we used uh, tarragon as a dragon, and it was a big uh, white and blue mixed dragon. We like to do creatures with a flare. We do something a little different each time. And we take traditional, uh, you know, fifth edition creatures, possibly, um, and we operate under the OGL license that, that Wizards of the Coast provides. So mm -hmm. we take some of the creatures from there and we add things to them or whatever. So that had the, a blue dragon t-shirt, this really big white and blue dragon that was on the cover of the t-shirt. And we write everything into the adventures. So you get really two sets of adventures in our crate each month. You get three one-shot cards that are uh, written by us and that has everything included in the crate in the adventure. So if there's a miniature, it's in the adventure, the t-shirt's part of it even. And then we procure from other publishers um, items that are we think are really cool, like a module or a book or something like that. Okay. Uh, right now we're, uh, we're featuring Frog God Games is the publisher that we're featuring for the purchase module. Um, we like their, their products, they're, they're really awesome. And uh, you know we'll, we'll insert other things from time to time. Um, so that was the month before last, and this month for October mm -hmm. was uh, Starfinder. We deviated just a little and we did a sci-fi crate, and uh, we used uh, the planetarium book that uh, Frog God created, which has a bunch of planets and creatures and stuff, okay. and that's something that was missing from the core rules when, pa when Starfinder came out was that they didn't have a lot of uh, additional species or a lot of other you know creatures mm -hmm. and planets. So we added that. And then the adventures that we write um, were included, but we're with, again, fifth edition. So. Nice. Um, so what comes first, your themes or the products that you're gonna put in the package? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's kind of at the same time. Okay. When we're searching the interwebs and we're looking around and trying to find good products, if we find a really nice product, something that's a good offering, we may create a theme for it. Like okay. if it's a book that somebody's willing to wanting to promote, if we get a really good deal on it, we'll create a theme for that publisher, okay. right, to match their stuff, and then we'll procure other items that fit that theme. That's one way. And then the other is we just pick a theme and we start putting stuff in it that matches, um, and we go, we create several themes out in advance. And we kind of shift them around depending on you know what we think fits or what bleeds into the next one, mm -hmm. because our stories, our adventures, they're serialized. Okay. So when you get a crate, you get three adventure cards, and those are written A, B, C in order, and you can play them in order or as one shots if you want. And then multiple months are tied together, and then multiple months make a season. So when we finished uh, season one in July. That was the uh, 12th offering in that season, and the characters that, if you were to play the whole season, would go from second to 10th level during that season. So. Nice, so you yeah. have it set so you can play the whole season or you can kind of jump in as yep, well. Yep, and if you decide to jump in, like uh, any time is the best time to subscribe, but if you, if you want to become a member in the middle of a season, we offer uh, the past crates and past cards on for sale. They're a little bit more, it's a much better deal if you sign up and then you, you get mm -hmm. them as they come. But uh, we do offer some of the others. Every once in a while we have a, we'll have a sellout month. We will sell everything. Like the Tarragon Expedition was a complete sellout. Okay. It, it came with a really big uh, mo uh, miniature, big miniature, right? It was a dragon, uh, hatchling. It was about this, uh, fit in the palm of your hand. It was pretty mm -hmm. good size. Um, John Popson with F and Cool Minis uh, does the miniatures for us, and we we commission the miniature um, molds, and they're uh, they're exclusive to us to start out. And then John sells stuff later on his website when he you know at his whatever he needs to do. Okay, so you said you sold out. So how much is a sellout? Um, so we don't talk specific quantities. Um, that kind of limits our ability to negotiate with certain vendors. Okay. So we uh, we do it in sets. Um, and if when we talk to a vendor, if they want to do promotional content, then that's product they donate and then we use. We don't do that very often. Um, we usually purchase at wholesale value or print ourselves. 
um, some of the items we commission directly and if we commission it we may purchase the the module you know the IP we might mm -hmm. purchase that and then get unlimited distribution for ourselves okay. it kind of depends it, it we work with the vendors mm -hmm. the whole objective is that the we push business to the vendors that are included in the crate we don't uh, maintain inventory on purpose we try to sell everything we have and our past crates and our past stuff is simply uh, a little bit of extra inventory mm -hmm. like if if for instance if we had you know if we had to make an order for uh, on based on 100 subscribers we might you know actually only you know ship out 75 and we'll have 25 left over okay. something of that nature mm -hmm. so the overstock that we have is uh, usually small cool do you have any questions Ryan I've been uh, hogging so. oh, yeah. um, I'm just thinking because uh, the you're talking about each month you get the, the three sorry the three cards and yep. that, that's all written in-house by you yep. and other people or, or it's uh, so it's it starts out with us okay. and we do the design and the concept and then I write the overall my wife is an editor and uh, and she's you know professionally trained so she does the editing and and all that and then we have uh, in future crates we're gonna have guest writers oh, cool. so we're gonna uh, reach out to the RPG community and it could be a mix of um, it could be somebody that's new and upcoming somebody we think that's really good but hasn't gotten a shot yet and we, we love to do that. We love to meet up with the small press and small small businesses. And then we're also going to um, try to hook up with some of the other, uh, you know, top tier talent and do yeah. some writing. I won't, won't give any spoilers because, yeah. you know, deals are in the works. So, but, uh, so, yeah, and for that, I'm, I'm, you probably give them the idea of the story, of the, the, yeah. the, the season so, you're working on. So depending, I guess, depending on the, um, depending on the writer and how, uh, how prolific they are already or how skilled they are or whatever the nature is, we uh, we might propose a theme. We may propose a, an adventure with a synopsis, possibly. But um, when we secure a, a top tier talent, they probably have something in the works. Maybe they give us a, a small piece of it. We do a premiere one shot based on some awesome module they have coming out later. You know, it's it's kind of open. So um, right now, the crate you're guaranteed you get the T-shirt, the three adventure cards, the one shots, a miniature. Um, a module or a hardback or something of that nature and uh, dice or coins you get an accessory along with it yeah. so all that's in included yeah you had the three three boxes or three or four out there for yep. the last yeah yeah are out there we had the, f the four the that's four boxes um, we had uh, bought some extras on purpose so that we could do for the con and uh, we had May June and July which were the last three months of our first season and since we go in level since we go from second to tenth level through the season those three boxes finished at like eight nine and ten so okay. the characters get to fight a kraken at the end of it or be fed to a kraken whichever the case is <laughs> right <The demogorgon>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> some history there <laughs> yeah yeah so oh yeah i don't i don't know if they caught that Dem yeah <laughs> it's okay it's my little reference there demogorgon um Oh, that's all the questions I have. Um, thank you so much for being on. Um, I think this is an awesome idea, especially for those who already subscribe. I mean, I subscribe to a couple of things, not necessarily boxes, but makeup and stuff like that. So it's this is a really cool thing, you know, especially if you're just starting out in RPG or trying to try your hand in RPG. It's kind of a, a low risk thing to do and to kind of get started out. So that's really awesome. So thank you for, for bringing this to our attention. Yeah. And again, you are? Chris Henson with RPG Crate. Perfect. Find you where? R RPGCrate.com. And there'll be links below. There will be links below. So thank you, Brian. All right. right on. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Hey there, everybody. This is Travis with Guys, Games, and Beer. I'm here with Mel and Susan Price. And Charlie Price. Hi there, Susan and Charlie. Um, we're here at Game Hole Con 2017. We are here to spend the night playing games. And uh, one of the games that we thought was very interesting and is the best kind of decision is Bad Decisions. And this looks like a, a tabletop game of the card variety. You want to go over uh, what it's about with us real quick? Well, everyone makes bad decisions. Yeah, those are the <laughs> most fun kind. This is basically... Have you seen this hat? <laughs> <laughs> basically a storytelling game where the prompt is a story card and you're filling in the blanks with full crisis and bad decision cards to make a silly story. So the gameplay goes, one player is a bard, bard gets a story card, fills in the first two blanks with cards from their hand, 
and then the players fill in the punchline with cards from their hand. The bard picks the punchline they think is most appropriate. The one that's funniest, the one they think goes best with the story that ended up being told, whatever. <laughs> the one that resonates. Everyone the one they start, like. The one, the one, one that like. hits close to home. That's right. Everyone starts with... The one that hurts with, a bit to read. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I'm not crying, you're crying. Everyone starts with five of each type of card. Um, it sounds like a lot, but you actually don't ha have to hold them all at the same time because, right. for instance, if Charlie sets up this one, so we're also, only going so. to be playing one of the Crisis cards. I, I do have to note a couple things about this game I noticed right away. I, I have not seen this game. like Some of the other crew has played it and really enjoyed it. I do say, A, I see a lot of different cards, and B, the fact that you have multiple points to kind of fill in um, doesn't make it like one quick punchline, which I really appreciate. It looks like there's a kind of a lot of ways to kind of switch it up, unlike other storytelling games, where it's like, okay, I've seen this card 80 times before. It only does the joke once. And you made this comment to me earlier, yesterday, the fact that you have played this humble many times and the number of variations hundreds. you have never we, we had play we play about. hundreds of times a year and we've had this game out for two, years now. out for two years and then we were playing the prototype with half as many cards for almost two years before that and yeah, by the time an exact, if we've ever had an there's, exact match, we wouldn't recognize it. There's 660 cards in the set, but there are millions of 480 cards. million possible combinations. Again, yeah, the fact that you have multiple kind of fill-ins, it, it leads to like an exponential factor. It's not like exactly. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, 200 times 200 times 200 times 60. Yeah, you, get, you can get really creative by the way you build your kind of story. So that, I think that's awesome. And there's also always interactivity because the judge fills in the first two, uh, the uh, bard that is. So so they're not just sitting back. They're, they're exactly. always, and it, let's say you have a card that's like, this is a dead card, I've had it for a long time, I'm never going to make it funny, make them make it funny. Because you know, <laughs> that's smart. these games always have, you can't make a game with all the cards funny for all people all the time. So whatever group you're playing with, sooner or later you're going to get a card in your hand that you go, this is never going to be funny with this group of people. So you use it to set up the story when it doesn't matter. And in fact, if it's a, a stupidly awkward setup, it just makes it funnier when you put the, the last card down. Yeah, you put everybody else in a bad so, shape. Actually, jumping ahead, but how did you guys come up with all of the, the things that are written on all the cards? Mostly... Ripped from the headlines, yeah. among other things. The, the, the crisis and bad decision cards are about 97% from actual news stories um, that we just took the funniest little piece out of. Hashtag Florida Man. Uh, the, Florida Man is Florida one of the fools. Man. Florida Man is a fool. <laughs> um, about a dozen of the fools are ripped off from our Kitsune of Foxes and Fools game because, you know, we had perfectly good fools. Why not reuse them? We um, adjusted some of them. Like we adjusted Warlord them a few. Warlord became a third world warlord. Right. Um, <laughs> partly for readability, too. Um, and then the, the others... Factor, the bounce. The idea was to get generic fools. So some of them are obviously fools, like um, the convicted pedophile. And others, are, like a respected doctor, is is the meta game is anyone can be a fool if you make the wrong decision in a crisis. Fair. Also, the the game isn't dated because we don't have particular personalities named. We instead, for example, say the Russian premier or the no the Russian the president of Russia the uh, of. French presidential candidate, the prime the, minister of Canada, gotcha. The so German in, chancellor. So it's not saying a former U.S. Names. president. Instead, you, uh, the players, will fill in whoever they are currently referring to. Yeah, that or, makes sense. we also have a popular former leader. And, and we have the mayor of Toronto, so people aren't going to think of the current mayor of Toronto, <laughs> right? <laughs> They're going to think about Rob Ford. <laughs> so, but but we're not maligning the poor guy. He's dead. But but he's in there. <laughs> now, that was on him. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so on so that happy we, note. I have one more thing. Uh, we so got, last yeah. year I was one of the people I got to try it out. But this year Ooh. I see you have two boxes. So Well, well actually, this is the, the back the of the box. Oh, the box. Back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We, in fact, right. have two boxes. We have the front and back. Awesome. <laughs> he, he was hoping there was an expansion. I oh, I yeah. wish. Yeah. We, we would love to sell box. enough to support an expansion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it could it's happen. A, no, it's I, an honest mistake. I, I, actually, I spent a lot of time on it, and the graphic design of the front was, had a very different intent than the graphic design of the back. 
Like, this is supposed to explain the game and be inviting, yeah. and this is just supposed to, like, be something you look at on the shelf and go, ooh, that's, that's interesting. That? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck is that all about? Yeah. So it looks like we've got a hand going, so okay. shall we dial into a round? Yeah. So, this just, I'll start out as the bard, and then we'll go around clockwise. And Sounds good. So, then you'll, Mel will be the bard next. Uh, and now. then, Travis? You'll, you, Travis, you'll be the bard at, thereafter. Sounds good. So, for this first round, the players will be looking for a crisis card. This just in, who sold kidnapped girls into slavery? We go now to live footage of image-obsessed parents in our continuing coverage of crisis. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> and then you draw a card to yep, replace. You want to make sure that you have all right, five all right. cards at any given time. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And okay. here's your replacement. I gotta, I, again, like, <laughs> it's fun like, going through these scenarios in your head. You're like, oh, you man. I've played this like a million times. Um, does the bard almost always take the funny one, or sometimes like something that just makes? Sense? Oh, it's, it's it's really it's weird. It's all over the place. So I, uh, you'll throw. Sometimes you'll throw one out, and you're like, "Wow, uh, I I this I just don't know if it's gonna work." I, I, I don't nothing. have anything in I my hand. I will throw and then this they out. Pick it. I do have to say the the scenarios kind of pan out. Like I'm sure, like bard wise, like everybody's gonna have different personalities, but. Um, it really is going to be like when they read it, how they interpret it, because because some of these are a little more generic. You're not just saying like, oh, this is X person or Y event. Like it's kind of a little more generic, so it's a little more subjective to what a person will make up in their head. And Absolutely. like I went to an art school, and I was encouraged to think in a lateral manner about problems. So sometimes I come up with the answers to uh, like the punchline to a thing which is funny to me but nobody, nobody else, else. Yeah. <laughs> and i'm fine with that because it made me sure. laugh that's yeah, there's so many times all, like, in other storytelling games like i'm like oh yeah this is hilarious this is hilarious and nobody is like yeah. i'm like i i fuck you guys i still think it's just funny <laughs> that's right. it's, it's, and i'm gonna explain to be, you why that's right it can still be hilarious whatever okay this just in. Who sold kidnapped girls into slavery? We now go to live footage of image-obsessed image obsessed parents in our continuing coverage of the phone ringing non-stop. That suggests something. In our continuing coverage of planned obsolescence. Object designed to fail, so you must buy new ones. That, would that be the girls? Would that be the, the parents? parents? The parents? Yeah, let's replace them. <laughs> yeah, screw it, we'll get new ones. The, they age out of the system, I guess. <laughs> oh. You were, always want to have a backup child. Oh. Yes, <laughs> always. Or a pet, they are depending. And so That's right, the girls that didn't quite make it. <laughs> In our continuing coverage of a problem easily solved by a quick web search. Oh, that summer camp was actually <laughs> oh. not for arts and crafts? Hmm. I, mm, mm. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go with the phone ringing nonstop. Just the idea of that they just got really good at it. <laughs> oh, so, all right, we got a gang up on it. They took the, the first round. Right, the, right, the fix right. is not in, okay, but, so, but sometimes we do think alike. So I know that we only got through one round, but I do have another question. Yes. Um, Go for it. Um, so, you said you tested this game for two years before it was kind of... With half the cards. Yeah. With half the cards, yeah. So how did you kind of decide what was going to make it to the final step? Um, some of the cards were just not funny with anybody. Things that didn't receive a good response, we sort of paired out. We pulled them out and put new things in. We found out that concise is really important. Anything Especially that, because it's more than two cards being combined, you need to keep it comparable. Right, you've, you've got a, you've got a story a that's mouthful. got a lot of lines filling in around it. So we try to keep the player cards to one or two lines. A number of them go to three, very few go to four. Also, tense management was an issue. So, when constructing a sentence, there's past tense, present tense, and so and on. The fool is always going to be a noun. The crisis is a, a noun form. It might have a verb in it that, that's present tense, but it it's a situation. Mm -hmm. And the then bad the bad decision is always past tense. So this is going to be a little more of, of an obscure question, just really quickly. Are there any ASDF movie references in here? 
It's hard to say. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I'm looking at this card, I'm looking at this card, I'm like, I'm wondering what else I might reference, but, uh... Um, there, there, there are, there are obscure... It's hard to say. There, there, there are definitely in, in there references to cultural things. It's whatever you want it to be. Pretty much. I like trains. <laughs> Hey, right. have you heard about the I Like Trains kid? He's pretty cool, but there might be something wrong with him. <laughs> All right, you will need a bad decision for this next round. All right. New online opinion poll on the reaction of a bored Oklahoma girl to hazardous chemicals in the water supply. If you blank, would that be okay? I mean, I'm sorry. If you blank, would that be okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> a little bit of Oklahoma going on. Uh, I assure you, the fix isn't in, but we've played this game a lot. We have, and I've got a bunch of possibilities here. I'm gonna go with that one. Alright. New online opinion poll on the reaction of a bored Oklahoma girl to the hazardous chemicals in the local water supply. If you believe spurious conspiracy theories, would that be okay? If you... <laughs> Chemtrails, Launched man. into a racist diatribe in public, would that be okay? <laughs> uh oh. In Oklahoma, yes. <laughs> we, we, we could have beer all over the table here. Unfortunately. <laughs> if you argued about it in all caps on the internet, would that be okay? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for Always. sure, for sure. Oh, That's yeah. more valley. Oh, all... <laughs> That's true. Awesome. You know, I tend to launch and uh, I'm going to go with the racist diatribe in public because I like topical. <laughs> Ooh, you are on a roll. All right. All right. We'll get the next starry card rolling right away. Right, As the bard. Yes. Let me uh, go ahead and... Go bard, go. What color are we looking for? Let's see. Cool. So I get to choose two? Yep. Yes, oh, you, do the, you, do, you the do the first, first two. You do the first two. Gotcha. Dramatical reading of a headline. Mm. Actually, one of the alternate play styles in our rules is you can let the bard choose any two, but it goes faster if they do. Gotcha, the first just for, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, also, the punchlines tend to be a little punchier when you fill in the last one because it's, it's, it's just it's a, harder to read. It's harder to read and it's harder to, like, once you know what the answer to a joke's gonna be, <laughs> like sometimes it works okay if you're filling in the last two, and mm -hmm. and but who, it takes longer. But it takes longer. Yeah. But we've All got right. a bunch of alternate variant rules. Cause so for escalating really quickly, did you hear how the unexplained sudden death of a popular celebrity hit that new tech company? They really vandalized the school with the, as with the senior class as a prank. I blame blank. Wow. <laughs> I mean, those, those tech companies get really the, rowdy. The supporter list, <laughs> oh, the backer list on the back of our... That's what oh, I geez. think. <laughs> the backer list on the back of the rule sheet is longer than the base rules for the game. So we have a bunch of variant rules and determine and how you can determine a winner and how you can... Uh, yeah, we, we basically so. said, okay, this is it's going... It's a really to, simple game. This is There's a, a bunch of other ways to play it. This is a party game. People right. are going to invent house rules anyway, so we're not telling you how to end the game. We're giving you five giving options. Giving the tools to, how, to play and enjoy the way you want to play. That's right. That's awesome. That's it's awesome. a toolbox of fun. <laughs> play okay. all night until you run out of cards or somebody has to go home. Whatever. <laughs> Did you hear how the unexplained sudden death of a popular celebrity hit that new tech company? They really vandalized the school with the senior class as a prank. I blame a robotic fish. That's applicable. That, I check checks out. It Billy checks Bass. out. I also blame a social media coordinator. Yeah, they're pretty ruckus. <laughs> as, as, yeah, they are the worst. Oh. I'm, look, I'm looking at you, Brad. <laughs> I also blame Wendy's Twitter feed. That rare and socially adept engineer. Oh, oh man, you guys really hit it. You just slammed them out of the park. Those cards are uh, again. It, I, I'm really tied between robotic fish and the rare socially adept engineer, but uh, the fact that this just fits so well, I'm gonna have to go with the rare socially adept engineer. 
All right. I, I put that one in for my brother and sister-in-law <laughs> because they are both engineers and they're wonderful people. Streak <laughs> broken. I have another question kind of related to the one before. So how did you guys come up with the story part? Those were tricky. <laughs> But, that's where the tense management yeah, that's, really that's, came in. That's where we had to figure out what we were doing with the other ones first. Some of them missed because, proofreading. Because otherwise it didn't make any sense when you tried to put the sentence together and you had to keep fudging it. So um, I'll continue answering the question while you conjugate your story. Sure. What kind of card are we uh, You'll be going crisis. Doing a crisis. So, Nobody said they'd be mad. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just Grammar. a visit. <laughs> so... <laughs> The way that we essentially came up with them was we wanted to get an even distribution of the six possible or orientations. Six possible orientations. Yes. Yeah. Of fool first, second, first third, and so on. Of fool first, second, third, of Because crisis, the first, first idea third. was just what it says in the box. Fool plus crisis equals bad decision. That was just the inception of the whole game idea. And that way you'd need three times as many bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't going to be funny. The bad decisions were, would always be the punchline if it was just that way, but we've we figured out that we could still make it pretty funny by reorganizing it so that the fool was the punchline or the crisis being the punchline. So once we knew we wanted an even distribution, we just had that distribution, then we tried to set up like news headlines or conversational uh, statements which just sort of collected these three things into a particular order. Subject, object, verb. Or subject, verb, object. Because the first half where we were prototyping was originally going to be called bad decisions in the news and then we were going to have expansions that were bad decisions in some other area. Mm -hmm. um, we basically went for a lot of them sound very clickbait, right? Yeah. Because we, we it was basically the lead into a news story is what we were looking for. Okay. So um, with that in mind, nobody avoided jail time using a self-inflicted wound quite like a social justice warrior. That's why blank faces the industry today. <laughs> oh, man. Uh... <laughs> that would be that would that would be the the clueless executive, I think. Clueless <laughs> executive. And we do have a, a fool of that. Remember, they're not using names. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, Cause, right. Because there's there's always gonna be another one of those mind stagnants. Right. Yeah. Clu clueless executive. Yeah, uh, Cosby. Really. Bill Cosby was this. And well, and we have Kevin Spacey. We have the latest arrest of for drunk driving of a pop star, you know, because there's always going to be another one, right? So, Just yeah. Like history repeats itself. All right. It's unfortunate. People. No, 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 no. It's it's much simpler. People will always make bad decisions. <laughs> that that is true. And Everyone it makes well. bad decisions. And seriously, the to the point where we could not believe that nobody had made a game called Bad Decisions yet. <laughs> it's 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 very straightforward. People make bad decisions. People. W the game sells itself. People walk up to us and say, "Oh, I make bad decisions," and we just say, "Do you come sit and play with us?" <laughs> or or our big banner that has the logo at the top. And, and people will come across the room and go, I make bad decisions all the time. What's this about? <laughs> it's great. Well, it works. Make a good one and purchase this delight. Exactly. <laughs> Play make with us. It's like today. opening a box of carnival. <laughs> That's right. Nobody avoided a jail time joy. <laughs> using a self-inflicted wound quite like a social justice warrior. That's why Xbox home screens accidentally running adult films faces the industry today. Whoops. That's why a car crashing into the police station faces the industry today. That's why anti-Semites working at the Holocaust Memorial faces the industry today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's sad because that was now, remember, it directly out of the headline. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. of those. All of Every those. Every last one of them yeah. really From... happened. Wow. Okay, and you may notice something a little different about this card. Yes, I was going to point that out. It's, it's got a little red R on it. That's, okay. that's R for racy. This game is designed using the rules that the in movie industry uses for PG-13. The R are the PG-13 cards. The rest of them are PG. Snarky, but PG. So if you are playing with a mixed audience that you're not sure, you can remove. And we even further subdivided them beyond just R. So there's... Language, 
Sex and sexuality, drugs and drunkenness. So, okay. say you have a friend who's Smart. in recovery and you don't want to trigger them. That's really nice. You can take out awesome? all of the ones that have RD related to them, so any reference to drugs, drugs or drunkenness is taken out of the game. Uh, that's very smart. That's very, very or smart. Or you're playing with your conservative grandmother who makes a lot of very racy comments but doesn't tolerate harsh language. Take and out everything that says my, L. My daughter is gender neutral. Props yeah. to that. She absolutely will not play Cards Against Humanity because of the things it presents. Right. Being able to take the sexuality cards out. And, and she would be able to look at them and figure out is that going to be a problem or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you take them out, you can take them to... We're not promising it's perfect, but we made the effort. Yeah, for, yeah, no, no, that, that, yeah having it try to be classified and everything. There, there might be a little bit of, you know, violence and stuff in the rest of it, implied or otherwise. But that doesn't make the ratings. PG. PG. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's the know, it's the American guidelines as opposed to the European guidelines. The Europeans would look at the sex and go, a naked man? What's so? wrong yeah. with that? Yeah. Um, so but then they'd look at blood and go, hey, now. <laughs> now wait a minute. Yeah. It's like crazy there. I'm I'm going with the anti-Semites. Now I'll because, take that one. Because of the social justice warrior. <laughs> I'm just gonna point out that you said you'd take the anti-Semites. <laughs> Can I not have them anymore? Oh uh, yeah yeah. All right, I'm gonna hand this right back. <laughs> So you're gonna have, a, I'm gonna have somebody else take that. Oh, I did it. You know, sometimes they don't. Uh, sometimes the, the, the ratings get a little confusing. Like I was always surprised that Beastmaster is PG. Yes. How was that movie PG? It was before PG-13. Okay, the ratings have really changed since oh, yeah. like the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Like there were yeah, definitely like boobies the, and that, like PG had, movies in the 80s. So. It. Oh yeah. You yeah. had monsters eating. People to the point of bones. I mean, it was, and that movie was PG. The 80s were fucked up. They were. Let's just, they, let's just put that out there. They, they transferred a, a baby from a pregnant woman into a cow. <laughs> or. Yeah, all right. Them off. So all right. The I've never seen this movie, and I'm not sure if I 100% believe him. But if he does, wow. And Beastmaster. Also, all, all a, that happened. A lot of movies, Master. even today, are paid. To get a certain rating. Yes. It's all about money and the ratings don't actually matter. So. They, they can come to a compromise mm -hmm. on what they have to take out. Yeah, it's an artistic decision. Like, it's like, oh yeah, we really meant this. Like, this isn't actually, like, gratuitous. So, I need to so lobby I'm going to say that your industry. effort is probably better than the effort that was done for that movie. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Watch the documentary, this film is not yet rated. No. Okay. <laughs> But All right. I need to lobby the music, the music, the, the film music industry. industry. You, you, you music can lobby the music industry too. To add the S and the D and, and the, the L. Yeah. yeah. Because depending on the kid, well, like my just, kid couldn't handle gore. To a certain now, extent, on television drugs, you get it. Deal. On television but, you get it. Because yeah, because it'll be mature with violence. It's mature right. with violence or mature with sexual uh, sexual themes and language and so on. It's but just, yeah, it would be nice the if the MPAA movies is just, that. it's PG-13, deal with it. <laughs> if you read the fine print, you, you can tell. If you, you realize that we live in a society where people aren't expected to read the end user license agreement. <laughs> that's true. But that's I gave away my soul twice. Yes. Girl. Well, you, you've yes. almost certainly given away your session. right to class yes. action sue somebody at this point. <laughs> there, there, was a, yeah, there was a game developer who legitimately, like, you actually gave away your soul if you accepted the time. Yeah, it was pretty good. Was in pretty a good. shocking event, thanks to another missing aircraft in Southeast Asia, someone made thoughtless, hateful comments on live TV. Not the best performance by this fool. <laughs> so then I picked this one up. Well, of course. <laughs> you say this kind of thing. I know who this is referencing, so let's pop that right down. <laughs> Us? Reference of an actual person? Not now, by name, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you can interpret it however you want, but in my mind, I got that lied down. <laughs> Okay. So that's the great thing about being generic because Girl. everyone will have somebody else that they go, oh, this is perfect. In a shocking event, thanks to another missing aircraft in Southeast Asia, someone made hot, made thoughtless, hateful comments on live TV. Not the best performance by a slovenly and inept plumber. <laughs> Not the best performance by a third world warlord. <laughs> 
<laughs> somebody, not, somebody does have the moral high ground, I think, on that. <laughs> not you know? the best performance by the U.S. Senate Technology Committee. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the third world warlord who's probably responsible for the missing aircraft. <laughs> oh, thoughtless, hateful comments. Um, they deserve what I coming them. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, right. Larry. That makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> All right, you're gonna need a crisis for this one. I frequently find myself in crisis. Crisis. And I've got some fabulous crises here. I find myself in times of trouble. Mother Mary comes to me. Play the peace gallery is. <laughs> Speaking words of wisdom, play the steam, Pass the play the cards. The <laughs> I think it's Laura's turn. <laughs> this is not for pictures. Okay, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> It will be. <laughs> Breaking hey, headlines. Right, right. do, 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 do. <laughs> Front page news. You get to be Perry White. <laughs> the underpaid <laughs> office intern unwisely yeah. defended the gender it's wage so gap. Insane. Now we must contend with what crisis? J. Jonah Jameson blowing a gasket. <laughs> uh, yep, <clears throat> sticking with it. <laughs> Dear. Sometimes your gut like is like play that card, but then you're like, uh, and then you're like, nah, let's, Boy, let's just stick with that. Side. That escalated quickly. <laughs> Alrighty. Hmm. Front page news: the underpaid office intern unwisely defended the gender wage gap today. Now we must contend with strikes by European cargo haulers. <laughs> they were offended. That actually seems to be kind of a straight line. I'm mildly surprised. <laughs> you kind of traced that back. <laughs> Now we yeah, must contend with another brutal campaign of genocide in Africa. <laughs> oh, wow. That yeah, they did escalate quickly. <laughs> and okay. we must also contend with disagreements shutting down the government. <sighs> that never happened. Yeah. What, in a civilized society? Now, again, I do that have to say, like, <laughs> considering you look at the cards, yeah, like, you get something that's pretty applicable, like, every time. I'm not, like, even cards, I'm like, oh, I thought that, and I was, like, immediately off the bat reading it, I'm like, oh, that's not very funny. But, like, in context, like, I was like, oh, that actually works out pretty well so far. So, props and, to that. And then every once in a while, you'll get somebody that looks through their hand when it's first dealt out, and they get about halfway through, and they start snickering. <laughs> yeah. That's a good sign. There's also the curse. The curse okay. is the best sign about the game. The curse is you play a card and then you draw a card and you're like, damn it, I wanted this card. Disagreements. <laughs> Shutting down the government. Who shut down the government? Yes, did. All right. Uh, so, so uh, since uh, since I'm gonna I'm gonna play the play the time in my favor. Uh, we're gonna have one more round. I'm gonna have a, uh, maybe I'll have a chance to tie it up. Actually, I know I'm not. I'm narrating. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll we'll get one more last round in here, and then we'll What's close a, it out. What's the score here? Cards Done. to cards. I, I got two to her three. So, Ooh, but I'm not gonna be anything. able. To, I'm well, not gonna be able to make it. Zero, one, two, three. Yep. I'm sure that again, I, it, in the long run, I would have won. I swear. But we'll, we'll play one more round here to kind of close it out. All right. All right. Let's see here. It's gonna be a crisis. Okay. Let's see. I'm never gonna get to play announced the boycott of Sesame Street. <laughs> or flirted with a neighbor a reporter while the neighborhood burned. All right. When someone cut both legs off of people. <laughs> wow. All right. Cut some legs. And that hits that hits too truthful. <sighs> when someone no, that, cut both legs one. off a statue of Ronald Reagan, uh. we might have guessed it was an avant-garde artist. As a result, the nation faces crisis. <laughs> it's funny to me. I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, that, that yeah, do it too. for you. Yeah, do it for you. <laughs> At the end of the day, you gotta make yourself happy. <clears throat> Doing it for herself. And the avant-garde artist. All right. So, when someone cut both legs off a statue of Ronald Reagan, we might have guessed it was an avant-garde artist. As a result, the nation faces auto-cannibalism. <laughs> Yay! All right. Well, you know, <laughs> okay. Yeah, right? I guess he made really made a statement. Uh, as a result, the nation faces an improperly labeled parts. Legs? Well, I don't know. I don't know where this leg goes. Oh, you mean another Me hand? I get legs. It. As a result, the nation faces memory leaks. The Reagan. The, our existence is the Matrix, 
and you cannot deny it. Reagan. Um, Memory leaks. I'm yeah. gonna have to go with. <laughs> that is a good argument. That is a good argument. But I'm gonna have to go with auto cannibalism because it's hilarious and escalated ridiculously quickly. So all right, it takes the win. All right, so this is a game called Bad Decisions. We all make them. They're all hilarious. Highly recommend you check this game out. Uh, again, it's it's a great storytelling game. I really like how it kind of cues things together uh, and puts the, puts the pieces together for you, but still lets you have that creative freedom. So please mention your other games that you have here and are demoing here. Sure. Um, our first game, Kitsune of Foxes and Fools, is a strategy game with sort of a Munchkin-like uh, play style. It's uh, the. Kitsune of Foxes and Fools is a story-based card game where you play as an adolescent fox spirit. You start off with two tails. The goal is to get to nine tails first. You gain, you essentially gain tails, which are kind of like levels in Munchkin, by playing progressively more difficult schemes against m more powerful or foolish fools. And uh, it is a game for three to eight people, and it's a lot of fun. Deep strategy card game, pretty complex, and a lot of fun. It has a lot of really complicated and interesting artwork, which I have no idea where it came from. <laughs> uh, and, and it takes about two hours to play. We got a great compliment that it was like a better version of Ninja Burger, which is a better version oh of Oh my god, Ninja Burger! <laughs> I love that game. You would love, you would love Kitsune, because it's just, it, it's, it takes a lot of the problems of, well, now it's the end of the game, how do you close it out? And it makes it intentional strategic choices at the end of the game where it's random at the start of the game instead of the other way around. Okay. And then we've got a spin-off to Spirit the called Dude. the Spirit yeah. Chase, Kitsune the Spirit Chase, which is a board game. It's for one to four players rather than three to eight and it probably will run about twenty to thirty minutes instead of two hours. Yeah. It's so a you lot can do faster. A, a solitaire game. Yeah, it's it's a lot faster. It's a it's a board game rather than a card game. And we have it in our second alpha version upstairs right now. And here. it will be cooperative as well as competitive. We will have two that's different awesome. versions to play. So that's why you can play it solitaire, because of the cooperative. Awesome. So, so as, a, as a reminder to listeners, um, this is not the first time that these game developers have been on the podcast. We did interview them last year. And what we got more <laughs> into sort of the development of the game and how it came about and that kind of thing. So, um, and this was like a let's play on the game. Uh, so a little different take this year, but uh, so if you're more interested in that kind of thing, go back and watch that one because they were great last year too. Hence why we had them back. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So if people want to pick up bad decisions or check out your other games, where can they go to find them? We're in distribution. At Game Hole Con, uh, Pegasus Games is carrying them, but most of the game stores in Wisconsin. And a lot of the ones in Minnesota and Illinois know about us. Uh, but if you just go into your local game store and say, I'd like you to get bad decisions for me, they'll just go to their distributor yeah, and say, we need some. Through, we're we're available available. Through. Yes. We do. Bad decisions CG for cardgame.com. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much for showing us how to Thank play. You. Really excited to see some of these other cards and scenarios. Again, check them out online if you're interested in the game. Uh, again, it's, it's damn solid. Thanks for so, playing with us. It was right. a lot yeah, of fun. This was great. Cheers, Thanks. guys.